Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, teacher. So we are in session number two of this week number three. We are um, almost done with all the information that we have for this course. So uh, we are going to learn some structures today. Uh, we are going to talk about tenses. Um, I have two kind of tenses that we are going to learn, but in this case, I have a lot of information of uh, these two tenses that we are going to study. But today we are going to start with uh, one of these uh, tenses that we are going to learn how to use it. Um, we are going to write some examples, uh, structures, information. And then um, I guess tomorrow we are going to um, have more information about the same tense. And also we are going to have some exercises in which we are going to practice all the information that we have about this tense. Then we have the other tense that is in two parts again, because I have a lot of information that we are going to use to complete these two tenses and to have all the information that we need about how to use them and how to um, add this information to our vocabulary or our um, information that we have about the English language. So we are going to start with this topic. I'm going to show you what is this topic about or what is the name of the topic and then I will explain all the things that we need to know about this topic. So we are going to talk about present perfect tense. So we are going to talk about um, some structures. In this case, we're going to use a grammar to understand uh, this uh, topic. So for this topic that we are going to learn today, we have some information that we need to know. We are going to talk about something general today. Tomorrow, we are going to um, put into practice all the information that we have about this topic. So now it's just to uh, know all the things that um, this topic is going to give to us. And tomorrow, we are going to see some more information, but also we are going to practice, uh, put into um, action all the things that we are going to learn for this topic. So we are going to begin with the information. The first thing that we need to know that the present perfect is a verb tense, which is used to show that an action taken place once or many times before now. So that is the first thing that we need to keep into mind. So I'm going to write the information here. So it says, the present, the present perfect is it's a verb tense, which is used So in this case, this is the main thing about the present perfect tense. That is showing us that an action has taken place once or many times before now. So this is the use to show that an action has taken place one time or many times before now.
the present perfect So it says then, in this case, the present perfect is most frequently used to talk about experience or changes. Talk about experience in this case and changes. So as uh, many tenses that we have in English have different uses, um, but there are um, less common and that's why we need to focus on the, the most common thing in which we are going to use the, this kind of tense. So in this case, this specific tense is to talk about experience or changes that haven't taken place. So we are talking about that something that have it happened in some time before now. Así que lo primero que necesitamos saber sobre, este, eh, sobre esta estructura, este tiempo, es que primero nos muestra que una acción ha tomado lugar, ¿verdad? O sea, que ya ha pasado. Y también que lo utilizamos para hablar de las experiencias o cambios que ya han sucedido. So in that case, it's present perfect, but in that case, it's something that has to be with present. But the action um, in this case uh, have taken place time before now, but has like an impact in our time that is the present. So we are going to see the present perfect forms. And we have the present perfect is a form using has or have plus past participle. Present perfect. We have has or had, has or have plus past participle. This is the main thing of the structure that we are going to use to create this kind of sentence. And it says that the questions are indicated to or by inverting the subject and have has and negatives are made with not. So remember that we have a lot of uh, verbs that we can use to express um, things in English. So in that case, if you have the list of verbs, or for example, you have a document in which you can find that list of verbs, we have irregular verbs and regular verbs. But for um, whatever list you have, we are going to find the verb, the past, and the past participle. That is the uh, the number three in the in the space that we have, and that. A verb is the one that we are going to use for this tense. Recuerden que tenemos um, en la lista de verbos, o sea, independientemente de la lista que tengamos, siempre van a venir tres o cuatro columnas. La primera es el verbo en su forma base, el pasado, el pasado participio y el significado en español. En este caso, el verbo que vamos a utilizar o la forma que vamos a utilizar es la que está en la tercera columna del pasado participio. 
So in that case, it is not complicated to understand that, that is the verb that we are going to use. And also we are going to use has or have depending on the um, subject that we are using to talk about in the, in the uh, sentence. So if we are using a third person, obviously we need to use has, but if we are talking about I, you, they, we, we need to use have. So in this case, we have the three, the sentence, the affirmative sentence, the question and the negative one. So we are going to see some examples. And we have the example number one, that is the affirmative sentence. And we have, you have seen that movie many times. So in that, in that case, I need to change this one because I don't need the whole sentence. So in this case, we have the subject that is you. Then I have the structure. Oh, I don't like in this color. This one. We have the subject. Now we have the structure. How plus the a uh, participle, the 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 past participle in this case. And I need this color. And then we have the complement, like in the other kind of sentences. So we have three parts in this um, in this kind of uh, statements. We need obviously the subject or the pronoun that we are going to use to um, make the uh, sentence. Then we have the structure that is has or have then the verb in past participle, and then the complement. And that's all the things that we need to write this kind of um, sentences. So this same sentence we are going to transform into a question. We're going to use question also. So in that case, you need to change the position we are going to write have or has at the beginning of the sentence. In this case is have, then we need to write the um, subject, have you, then we have the verb seen that movie many times. So it's almost the same with the a simple uh, present uh, sentences, because in that case, we are just going to need the same elements. And for the negative one, we have the subject have plus not the verb seen that movie many times. So in that case, we can see, uh, we can say that we have this kind of a structure. We're going to write the three structures, affirmative, and we have subject plus have or has plus past participle, plus complement. Question. We have have or has plus subject plus past participle plus complement plus question mark. 
And for the negative, we have subject, plus have or has, plus not, plus complement. So we have the three structures that we are going to use with these tense. So in that case, we are just to complete the information that we have in the, um, the structure that is not necessary to change anything because in that case, we have the uh, formula in which we are going to complete the information. We know that in all of the tenses that we are going to use this kind of structures to help us to create simple sentences. So now- Teacher, so, sorry, excuse me. Uh, and the negative form, and uh, where is the verb? In negative. Uh-huh. Have, oh, has, must, that's, that's not, good. Must. Thank okay. you. Okay. That's correct. I, I didn't uh, write the past participle. It's the same, but thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So in this case, the, the verbs that we are going to use are just the past participle. We can use all the verbs that we have in the list, but in the past participle form. Always in this case. Obviously, we are going to add have or has, but we are going to use the past participle. So, what are the uses for the present perfect? We are going to see what are the uses that we can give to this structure. So, we have the uses. And we are going to see, but I need to change for the other one. I think for here. Okay, we are going to see use number one. Use one on a specified time before now. In this case, we don't have the specific time for the action. So in that case, we have unspecified time before now. That is between the past and the present, but we don't have the exact time for the action. So in this case, it says, we use the present perfect to say that an action happened at an unspecified time before now. The exact time, it is not important. You cannot use the present perfect with a specific time expressions such as yesterday, one year ago, last week, when I was a child, when I lived in Japan, at that moment, that day, one day, etc. We can use the present perfect with an specified expression such as ever, never, once, many times, several times, before, so far, already, yet. So in this case, uh, we are talking about that we don't have the specific time for an action because it is not like very important to have that information. So in that case, when we are talking about this kind of actions, we cannot, we cannot use time expressions. And you know that we have a lot of time expressions in which we are specifying the time uh, in which the um, action take place. So in this case, we are not going to use that kind of phrases like yesterday in the morning, at night, uh, the day before yesterday, um, one year ago, all of that, um, time expression, we are not going to use with this structure because we don't need that information. So we have here, uh, 
happen at an unspecified We have here the words that we are not going to use. A specific time expressions. such as, and we have the examples. These ones uh, are the time expression because it's talking about the specific time in which an action is going to happen. So we have the first one yesterday. Then we have one year ago. Then we have last week. Then when I was a child. When I lived in Japan. At that moment. That day, one day, and we have a lot of uh, time expressions more. Así que en este caso, cuando estemos utilizando el presente perfecto, no vamos a poder utilizar time expressions. Um, we have a long list of this kind of um, expression that we can use to talk about the time. So in that case, all of that uh, expression that we use to talk about a specific time, we are not going to use it because in that case, uh, it's very clear that we are talking about an specified time. So we don't have a exact date or data about the things that are happening. But we can use some expressions that are unspecific. Uh, this expression uh, don't explain or don't give more information about the day. They are just um, helping us to understand hmm, some times that is happening in this kind of action. So we can, use the present such as in this case this kind of uh, phrases or words we can use with this uh, structure or with this Tense. And is ever, because we don't know the time of ever, never. The other one, once, many times, several times, before, so far, already, and so on. Así que para este tiempo no vamos a utilizar expresiones de tiempo, sino que vamos a utilizar estas expresiones que no especifican, ¿verdad? El, el momento en el exacto en el que sucedió la acción. Así como never, nunca, 
O sea, sabemos que nunca pasó, no hay una fecha exacta. Eh, many times, muchas veces, pero ¿cuándo? We don't know when. So in that case, we are going to use this kind of expression in which we are not uh, giving uh, more information about the time. So we have some examples of this information. So we are going to see the examples using the structure for the present perfect. So we have, I have seen that movie 20 times. I have seen that movie 20 times. So in that case, it's talking about the, um, uh, how many times, but they are not uh, telling us um, the dates. Yo he visto esa película 20 veces. In a day, we don't know. In a month, Maybe in years, maybe, but we don't have the specific um, time in which I have seen that movie. So in that case, we can use that expression because it is not giving me the date. En esa eh, oración tenemos, ¿verdad? La misma estructura, solo que aquí estamos agregando números, pero no estamos diciendo cuándo. Estoy diciendo cuántas veces la vi pero no estoy diciendo cuando la vi, no estoy diciendo, I have seen that movie yesterday, that is incorrect. Or maybe I have seen that movie 20 times um, in the last 10 years, because in that case, it is not possible to use that kind of expressions. Then we have another one. I think I have met him once before. I think I have met him once before. In that case, we are saying that we have met that person once. La hemos conocido o la hemos visto una vez, pero no decimos cuándo. No estamos hablando del tiempo, solo decimos una vez antes. ¿Cuándo? No lo sabemos. So in that case, it's correct. Then we have, there have been many earthquakes in California. So in this case, it's general information about earthquakes. Han habido, ¿verdad? Muchos terremotos en California a lo largo de la historia, maybe, del año, de la semana, we don't know. So in that case is correct. Then people have traveled to the moon. People have traveled to the moon. Then People have not traveled to Mars. This case is negative. To Mars. Have you read the book yet? A question. Then another one, nobody has ever cleaned the mountain. So the last one is a question has, there ever been a war in the United States so in that case we have some example of this uh, expression that we are going to use to 
uh, explain some actions, but in that case, we are not using the time. We are just expressing the things that we are going to say, but in that case, we are not putting the specific time for that action. So in that case, um, seeing all of this information that we have about the present perfect, how do you, you actually use the present perfect? What is the a, a specific use for this structure? And it says that the concept of on a specified time can be very confusing to English learners. It is best to associate present perfect with the following topics. And we are going to see what are the topics in which we can use this specific tense. No es que sea un poco confuso el usar el tiempo que no está, o sea, no es un tiempo en específico, porque dice que es mejor eh, atribuirle el uso del presente perfecto a la experiencia, por ejemplo. No simplemente un tiempo que no está en es, un tiempo que no se ha especificado o que no es específico. Pero si lo atribuimos a la experiencia, puede que sea un poco más fácil para nosotros entenderlo. So, we have different topics in which we are going to use the present perfect. And we have topic number one. That is the experience. And it says that you can use the present perfect to describe your experience. It is like saying, I have the experience of. You can also use this tense to say that you have never had a certain experience. The present perfect is not used to describe an, a specific event. So in that case, it's very clear why we are using on a specified time or unspecified actions because we are not talking about a specific events. We are talking about experience, something that we maybe did in the past or in some time. So in that case, topic number one, experience. to describe your experience. It's like saying, I have the experience of say that you have never had a certain experience. not used to describe a specific event. So we have the example. I have been to friends. So this sentence means that you have had the experience of being in friends. Maybe you have been there once or several times, but in this case, it's not talking about the time in which we um, were in that a specific place. We are just talking about the experience that we have visited that place many times, just one time or 
um, a lot of times. So, en este caso, tenemos que fuimos a Francia, ¿verdad? Hemos estado en Francia. En ese caso, estamos hablando de que fuimos al lugar, vivimos la experiencia de ir al lugar, pero no estamos especificando cuándo. So, in that case, it is not necessary to say, I have been to France last week. That is not necessary. We just have the experience, and that is the point. Then, I have been to France three times. Three times. In this case, we are uh, telling the number of uh, visits that we have uh, to that country. So in that case, it is, it's okay to use three times because we have uh, been in that place three times. But we are not talking about um, the specific date, June, July, maybe in, on August, uh, January for my birthday. That is not necessary to say. Then I have never been to France. I have never been to France. I think I have seen that movie before. Then he has never traveled by train. John has studied to foreign language. And the last one, have you ever met him? And we have topic two. And it says that is a change over time. Remember that uh, we say that we have to, maybe some topics in which we are going to use this structure and the one is the experience and the second ones, um, and the second one is change something that is going to change or something that has changed in some time in the past or over time and we use that we often use present perfect to talk about Change has happened over a period of time. And we have the examples. We have number one. You have grown since the last time I saw you. Since the last time I saw you. Another one, the government has become more interested in arts education. Has become more interested in arts education. Japanese has become one of the most popular courses at the university 
since the Asian Studies program was established. Um, was established. And the last one, my English has really improved since I moved to Australia. to Australia. So in this case, we're uh, talking about things that has a, um, a specific change. Así que tenemos hasta el momento dos temas. El primero, la experiencia de haber realizado alguna acción um, en algún momento de nuestra vida. Y la segunda, eh, son cambios a través del tiempo. Así como en el, en el primer ejemplo donde dice, you have grown since the last time I saw you. Eh, has crecido desde la última vez que te vi. The government has become more interested in our education. El gobierno eh, está más interesado en la educación en el arte o se ha convertido, ¿verdad? Eh, o se ha transformado en alguien más interesado. And the last one, and it says, my English has really improved. Mi inglés ha mejorado mucho desde que me moví, desde que me mudé a Australia. In that case, we don't know what is the time in which this person has uh, or had moved to that country, but it's something that changed over time. And we have topic three. That is accomplishments. And it says that we often use the present to list the accomplishments of individuals and in humanity. You cannot, again, you cannot mention a specific time. So in that case, uh, when we are talking about accomplishments, um, we are talking about in Spanish, de los logros, de los cumplimientos, de los éxitos que tienen las personas. So in that case, we are going to create like a list of that uh, things that people it's, it's doing. So let's see, what are the examples? The first one, man has walked on the moon. That is something incredible. Then our son has learned how to read. Has learned how to read. Doctors have cured many deadly disease. Have cured 
many deadly disease. And the last one, scientists have split the, the atom. So we have three topics by this time. Number one, experience. Number two, it says changes. Number three, accomplishments. So, in the number one, estamos hablando de la experiencia. Número dos, de los cambios a través del tiempo. Y número tres, de los logros que tienen las personas. So, it can be something very big or something kind of small but important in the life of that person. Now, we are almost done. And we have topic number four. Topic four, and it's talking about an incomplete action you are expecting. So it says that we often use the present perfect. to say that an action which we expected has not happened using the present perfect suggest that we are still waiting for that action to happen. So in this case, it's something that has no ending. So in that case, we are expecting that action is still going to happen in that time that we are right now that is the present. So we have the examples. And we have Jane has not finished his homework yet. Then we have Susan has a master Japanese, but she can communicate. Another one. Bill has still not arrived. And then the rain hasn't stopped. And the other one that is topic number five. We have multiple action at different times. Multiple actions at different times. And it says that we also use the present perfect to talk about several different action which have occurred in the past at different times. Present perfect suggests that uh, the process is not complete and that more action are possible. Talk about 
several different actions which have occurred in the past at different times. It suggests the process is not complete and more actions are possible. So in this case, we are talking about some uh, action that um, happened in the past, but in this case are not complete and maybe it's going to happen something more about that actions that we are expecting to end. So we have the examples. And we have the army has attacked that city five times. Then I have had four quizzes and five tests so far this semester. We have had many major problems while working on this project. And we have the last one. She has talked to several specialists about her problem, but nobody knows why she is sick. Nobody knows why she is sick. So in this case, um, we are talking about that we have uh, five different topics in which we're going to use this uh, structure. So in this case, we are having five specific situations that are the best option for this, um, this tense. Para este eh, tiempo que estamos utilizando, que es el presente perfecto, sabemos que no vamos a utilizar los time expression. That is one thing that we need to keep in mind. So, Tenemos cinco temas en los que nosotros vamos a trabajar con lo que es eh, este, este tiempo. Tenemos el primero que es eh, acerca de la experiencia. El segundo de los eh, changes, los cambios a través del tiempo. El tercero que eh, tiene que ver, ¿verdad? We have here, number one, experience. Number two, change over time. Number three, there are accomplishments, que son los logros que tienen las personas. Number four, an incomplete action you are expecting, que es una acción incompleta, que estamos esperando a que suceda. Que no ha terminado, pero nosotros estamos esperando a que termine. And then number five, 
that is multiple action at different times. Tenemos múltiples acciones que han sucedido en diferentes mm, tiempos o situaciones. So in that case, we have that five uh, uh, topics in which we are going to use that structure. In some uh, cases, we can tend to um, think that the structure are just um, for helping us to uh, express our ideas, but also uh, when we are learning these kind of topics, we know that there are a lot of information that we need to know about the structures that we are going to use to talk about in English. And you know that it has to be with grammar and all of the things that we need to know to put into a practice in the best way. So remember that in this kind of tense, we are not going to use time expression because the exact time the action happened, it is not important. Sometimes we want to limit the time we are looking in for an experience. We can do this with expressions such, such as in the last week, in the last year, the, uh, this week, this month so far, but it is not like, um, it is not very common to do that. So it says that last year and in the last year, are very different in meaning. Uh, last year's means the year before now, and it is considered a specific time which requires simple past. In the last year means from um, 365 days ago until now. It is not considered a specific time, so it, it, um, it requires present perfect. Es un poco um, complicado, Entender este tipo de frases en las cuales dice el año pasado, last year, se considera como el año antes de este. And in that case, eh, se considera como un, eh, un tiempo en específico. Y obviamente lo vamos a utilizar con el presente simple. But if we are going to use in the last year, en el año pasado, eh, that in Spanish is almost the same, but in English it is different because we are using in the last year, means, eh, significa que estamos diciendo 365 días um, atrás hasta ahora. It's not like we're saying the last year. It's kind of complicated, but it has to be with uh, the way in which we are writing uh, these sentences. So it is not considered a specific time. En ese caso, cuando ponemos in the last year, no se considera como un time expression, porque no estamos hablando de un tiempo en específico. Pero si um, utilizamos solo last year, it is not possible to use it with the present, um, I mean, with the present perfect. So we have that the duration from the past until now that with non-continuous verbs and non-continuous uses of mixed verbs, uh, we use the present perfect to show that something start in the past and has continued up until now. For five minutes, for two weeks, and since Tuesday, our old duration which can be used with the present Perfect, because in that case, it is not a specific, a specific, a specific time. So it is a possible to use that kind of um, phrases with these tense. So it has a lot, a lot of information that we are going to use for this um, present perfect. But at the end, we just need that we have the structure that we are going to use to create sentences. So remember the structures because um, tomorrow we are going to have some exercises. Así que recuerden las estructuras de el present perfect para la afirmativa, la question and the negative one because tomorrow we are going to have some examples or some um, exercise that we are going to perform. So now it's time to end this session number two of the week number three.
We are going to see each other tomorrow. Have a good night. Thank okay. you. Good night. Good night.